بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه ما بعد This is our 22nd lesson going through the text حصن المسلم uh, authored by شيخ سعيد بن علي بن وهف القحطاني رحمه الله تعالى We have arrived at the 67th chapter which is pertaining to دعاء ورؤية الهلال The dua, the invocation that one makes when they see the new moon and this is generally occurs at, at the beginning of every single month and the hilal uh, of the new moon it becomes a debate or it becomes prominent when we talk about the hilal of Ramadan and that's when we actually care about the hilal generally but the amma, the general people start to care about the hilal the hilal of Ramadan at the beginning of Ramadan and also the hilal of Shawwal when Ramadan exits because as we know Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated upon us when Ramadan enters to begin the fast Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَى فَلْيَصُمْهِ Whoever witnesses this month, then let him fast it. And so it's important that you know when this month begins and when this month ends. So that you make sure that you fast between that period. And there are some fiqh uh, ahkam pertaining to the hilal, which you will take in the ta'ala in the books of fiqh, inshallah. However, here, when you see the new moon, upon sighting the new moon, there is a dua that one makes. And that is, as the Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, الله أكبر اللهم أهل اللهم أهله علينا بالأمن والإيمان والسلامة والإسلام والتوفيق لما يحب ويرض لما والتوفيق لما يحب ربنا ويرضى ربنا وربك الله. This dua is a dua that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم used to make. ابن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه he narrates that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا رأى الهلال قال that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he would see the hilal when he would see this new moon which generally you see it on the first and the second night of the, of the month uh, he would say this dua Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest Oh Allah bring us the new moon with security and faith Allahumma ahillahu alayna bil amni wal iman or bil yumni wal iman was salamati wal islam and likewise with peace and in islam i.e. us being in the state of al-islam wa tawfiq ilma yuhibbu rabbuna wa yirda and uh, to give us in ha- and to make this month in harmony with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for us and that which pleases him to barakat asma'ahu wa jillat sifatuh our Lord and your Lord is Allah and so we, we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month to bless it with our, to bless it for us and to grant for us in it thabatu ala al-iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants for us in this month the ability to remain firm upon al-iman we finished the last month upon iman we want to continue this month and remain firm and get even stronger in our Islam and in our Iman and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to be amongst those whom are doing acts that love Allah, that, 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 that necessitate the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Naam. then the Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala speaks about the ending of this dua Rabbi wa Rabbukallah or Rabbuna wa Rabbukallah afaminat al the Lordship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Then the Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala mentions the dua in the next chapter pertaining to iftar al-sa'im or iftar al-sa'im the dua for when breaking the fast and of course as I mentioned the fasting has an uh, intrinsic link or well, there, there is a major link between the fasting and the new moon such that because uh, because the new moon it, it becomes يعني, most prominent amongst the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and it becomes most uh, a topic of discussion amongst the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa during the month of Ramadan. So how do we start Ramadan? How do we end Ramadan? By looking at the hilal and the debates that we should all يعني, have something of a of a, of a uh, يعني, experience with talking uh, about the new moon. Has it been sighted? Ask someone, has the new moon been sighted? And so this moon uh, generally comes to prominence amongst the Muslims when they are fasting, when they are when they want to enter into the state of fasting during the month of Ramadan, the ninth month of the of the uh, Islamic lunar year. And so the Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala put under this uh, chapter of uh, citing the new moon. Likewise, when you want to break the fast, what is a special dua that one can make? And that is the have a وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله من حديث عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أفطر قال ذهب الظماء وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله that the thirst has gone the veins have been moistened and the reward is confirmed بإذن الله تبارك وتعالى نعم uh, and so this is the dua that one makes when they finish the fasting and they break their fast
And so in this dua, you shouldn't make it before you break the fast, rather it should come after you break the fast. Uh, and of course, the insha'Allah here, God willing here, is linked to the reward. Because as we know, the ajr, the reward, is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody has the, yani, the ability to see whether the actions have been accepted. So one should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them the ability to grant them acceptance of their of their uh, ajr. To grant the acceptance of their ajr. As the ajr is under the mashi'ah, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yataqabbalu ma yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that which he wills. And we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from the muttaqeen. Inna ma yataqabbalu Allah min al muttaqeen. Then another form of dua that one can make one when they break their fast is Allahumma inni as'aluka bi rahmatika allati wasi'at kulla shay'in an taghfir li and this dua is an ather it's not from the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam rather it's an ather from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiyallahu anhu oh Allah I ask you by your mercy which encompasses all things that you forgive me and of course here this is tawassul bi bi sifatillah azza wa jalla this is a uh, a, a tawassul which is shar'i a tawassul which is shar'i that one seeks a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the sifat and the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala هَذَا لَا بَأْسَ بِهِ Then the Musannif rahimahu Allah ta'ala after mentioning specific dua which is when you break your fast the idea that you make what about if you're generally just eating food? What about if you are generally just eating food? And so one should understand the etiquettes pertaining to eating food and so ikhwani fillah Islam is a, is a, is a, is a it's, not, it's not just a religion for you and Allah between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the masjid that is not the what Islam is, and people have this misconception today, especially that they think Islam is like other religions. In that you look at the church, you look at the Christians, Methodist, the only time that they are Christian is when they are in the church. Outside of the church, they leave their Christianity. They eat their pork, they eat whatever that that their Bible made haram for them. They indulge in. As for the Muslim, Islam is a way of life. Islam is a way of life. It tackles everything that we do, every single thing that you do on this earth. There must be. Guidance behind it and that guidance from the Kitab Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So even in your food, even in the toilet, we spoke about earlier on in this in this series. Uh, and we're gonna see with Ta'ala, even your relation even your relations that you have with your wife or with your spouse, even there, Islam has a say in it. Islam has a say in every single thing that we that we do. Whether we eat, before we eat we say we say we say adhkar. When we eat, we say adhkar. When we go to the toilet, we say adhkar. When we go, when we see the moon, we say adhkar. And so you see this, this, this whole Islam, the Islam of the individual is his whole life. The Islam of the individual is his whole entire life. It is Islam that guides us. It is Islam that we should remain firm upon, not anything else. We don't revolve our life around Islam. We don't revolve, we don't revolve Islam around our life. We revolve our, our life around Islam. Islam is the pillar. Islam is the asl. And our life has to, has to fall in accordance to that, not Islam in accordance to our desires, but rather our desires must be in accordance to Islam and not the other way around. This is our life. Islam. There is no other religion in the eyes of Allah except Islam. This is the only way of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with any other way of life. This is the only way of life he is pleased with. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا And so we believe that this Islam وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا He who takes Islam as a, as a way of life He who takes anything other than Islam as a way of life فَلَنْ يُخْبَلَ مِنْهِ Then you'll never be accepted from him So any other way of life is rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The only way of life that is accepted is the way of life upon Islam upon Tawheed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَاتِّبَاعُ سُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And so when, when, when one eats or when one is going to proceed to eat, the what are the things that he should say? Number one is, إِذَا أَكَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ طَعَامًا فَيَقُلْ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ If any one of you is going to begin eating, then let him say بِسْمِ اللَّهِ in the name of Allah. And this stems from uh, يعني, uh, the hadith of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم in the hadith of the Ummah Mu'mineen. Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت, إِذَا أَكَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلَذْكُرِ اسْمَ اللَّهِ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, if any of you wants to eat something, then let him mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِن نَسِيَ فِي أَوَلِهِ فَلَيَقُلْ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ أَوَلِهِ وَآخِرِهِ If you forget, and there is many times that one can forget, if they are stressed, مثلا, and they start eating food straight away, if they are in a hurry, they might forget saying بِسْمِ اللَّهِ during the middle of their food. And so if you forget, what do you say? You say بِسْمِ اللَّهِ فِي أَوَلِهِ وَآخِرِهِ Be the name of Allah in the beginning of it and in the end of it. And this again is the continuation of the hadith of Aisha رضي الله عنها, that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, إذا أكل أحدكم فليذكر اسم الله في أوله فإن نسي أن يذكر الله تعالى في أوله فليقل 
Bismillahi fi awalihi wa akhirih. And as we know, the shaitan, the shaitan, he eats with the slave if he doesn't mention the name of Allah. So you mention the name of Allah as a protection from the shaitan. The shaitan that runs away. The shaitan will then run away. Naam. And uh, uh, this evidence for the shaitan eating with the slave is from the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he saw uh, one of the sahaba eating without mentioning the name of Allah. And so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he laughed and he said, ما زال الشيطان يأكل معه فلما ذكر اسم الله استقاء ما في بطنه. And when shaitan, he was eating with the slave because uh, he never said Bismillah. But when he said Bismillah, the shaitan started to uh, يعني, what do you call it? Vomit out that which he had eaten from the, from the, with the slave in terms of the food. Naam. Then the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, or oh, then the Musannif actually رحمه الله تعالى he said, ومن أطعمه الله الطعام فليقول اللهم بارك لنا فيه وأطعمنا خيرا منه ومن سقاه الله لبنا فليقول اللهم بارك لنا فيه وزدنا منه. And so whoever Allah subhanahu wa taala has granted food, then he should say when he finishes اللهم بارك لنا فيه وأطعمنا خيرا Min. Oh Allah, bless us in it and provide us better than it. And when and when he is given uh, milk to drink, then he should say, Allahumma barik lana fi wazidna min. Oh Allah, bless us in it and give us more of it. And this is uh, this this dua is from the hadith of Abdullah ibn ibn Abbas and Allah Taala an that the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and him, i.e. the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and him, uh, him, i.e. ibn Abbas and Khalid ibn al Walid رضي الله عنهم أجمعين. They came into the house of Maymunah. And so there was, uh, Maymunah came with a uh, utensil uh, or with a pot. And in the pot was uh, milk. And in the pot was milk. And so the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, drank from it. And uh, Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhu, was on the right of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Khalid, Ibn al-Walid, radiyallahu anhu, was on the left of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so... Uh, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Ibn Abbas Radiallahu an, Take this, drink from it Ash-shurbatu lak Take this If you wish, if you don't want to drink I will uh, give it to Khalid Ibn Walid And so Ibn Abbas Radiallahu ta'ala an, He said Ma kuntu u'thiru ala su'rika ahada I am not going to give your From your, يعني, from what you have drank Or Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To anybody else Because here as we know, the Messenger of Allah is Mubarak. The Messenger of Allah is blessed. And so all of the athar of the Messenger of Allah, anything the Messenger of Allah touches, they, it is considered blessed. And so Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, did not want that blessing to go to anyone else other than him. And so he said, give it to your Messenger of Allah. After the Messenger of Allah offered it to Ibn Abbas and said to him, if you don't want it, I'm going to give it to your friend Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu an. And the surah here is Mabaqi. That which has remained from the uh, milk that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had left. Now, and then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, there is nothing that can take the place of food and drink except milk. And this is a reality. And this is a reality. You find that milk, if someone drinks a, 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 a glass of milk, it can let him, it can make him go on for a few hours. It can take the place of the food and the, and the drink. And it's a beautiful form of uh, sustenance that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has allowed us to uh, enjoy. Let's Allah, نحمد الله عز وجل على ذلك. Because there are people who are allergic to milk, who can't drink milk, and who who have missed out, who miss out on this blessing due to يعني uh, illnesses that they can suffer from drinking the milk. They might be lactose intolerant, etc. However, whoever has been given this نعمة فنشكر الله. Then, then give thanks to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. For very nothing can take the place of food and drink except uh, milk, as the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said عليه الصلاة والسلام. When you finish eating, the Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala speaks about a dua in the faraghi min al-ta'am. When a person finishes eating, what should they say? He should say, Alhamdulillah, he did amani hadha wa razaqanihi min ghayri hawlin minni wa la quwwah. Praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this food and sustained me with it, though I was unable to do it and I was powerless. And this from the hadith of Mu'adh uh, radiallahu ta'ala an Mu'adh ibn Anas radiallahu an that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he mentioned this dua. And this dua, Ikhwani Filah, is very beautiful in that the slave recognizes that this food that I have eaten is not because of me. I have not worked hard to get this food. لا. Rather, it's from the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who granted me the ability to get this food and to eat it. And that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given me the sustenance even though I was unable to do it myself and I am powerless. And of course, the mu'min here, he realizes even in the food that he drinks for, for, for sustenance, 
So he, he, he knows that this source of food is not from him. He didn't create this food. Rather, this food from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to him as a bounty, as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he praises and thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this for this food. You find people who don't have this food. You find people who, who, who are unable to have even 1% of the food that you have. Living here in the West, the food that we have, يعني, everywhere we go, uh, one pound, two pound, you can get a يعني, crazy amount of food. Whereas back home or in the lands of the Muslimin, in the poor lands of the Muslimin, the food that we throw in the bin, the food that we throw in the bin, that is enough for them to survive on for, for months. For months. The food that we have thrown in the bin, for let, let alone the food that we have on the on the table itself. فَيَحْمَدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ يَحْمَدُ اللَهَ Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who granted you and did not grant your brother who's suffering in, 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 in the lands of the Muslimin, uh, some of the lands of the Muslimin that we are going through trials and tribulations, who can't have the food that you have. فَتَحْمَدُ اللَّهَ Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then understand that use this food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, has given to you as sustenance to then work in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to then act in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هَذَا مَا عَلَيْنَا This is what's upon us, to take the sustenance that we've been blessed with and to then use that power and that energy we get from it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, helping out our brothers who can't have what we have, to give them, to give them the opportunity to, 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 to live a life that is in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the brothers and sisters that we have, uh, يعني, who, who may not be uh, practicing the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who might be indulging in sins and indulging in ma'asi, indulging in bid'ah, indulging in dalal, to use this food that we've been given in our sustenance to grant, to give ourselves that energy to go out and call them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, call them back and pull them back to the tariq al-haq and show them the path of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the path of guidance that will guide you to Jannatin Arduha uh, Samawat wal Ard, Uddat Lil Ladina Amen, Uddat Lil Muttaqeen. Naam. Then the Musannif Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentions another dua, which is Alhamdulillah, Kathiran Tayyam, Warakan Fi, Gaira, Gaira, Gaira Makfiyan, Wala, Gaira Makfiyan, Wala Mwadda, Wala Mustagan and Anhu, Rabbana. This hadith uh, is from uh, Al Bukhari, the hadith of Umam, Taladullah Ta'ala, and this is this dhikr, which is uh, all praise to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, praising Him abundantly, uh, good and blessed uh, in it. Uh, it cannot be compensated. I eat this food that we have eaten. It cannot be compensated. And likewise, our praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be compensated for, uh, nor can it be left, nor can it be done without our Lord. Then the Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala, he speaks about uh, 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 one of the invocations that you make when you are, uh, when you are a, a, a host and you have a dinner guest. You have a host and you have a dinner guest. What should what dua that what, what dua should you make as a guest to your host? And we know from the rights of the Muslim upon the other Muslim, his Muslim brother, is if he calls you to a walima that you attend it. If your host, if a Muslim brother hosts you and he grants you the ability to come and gives you permission to come to his house and eat with him, then you should go. Then you should go. Now when you go and you eat with him and you enjoy your time, what do you say to your host? Are there any form of adhkar that you can say to your host, congratulate him, to make dua for him, etc.? Yes, there is. There is. And this is, Allahum barik lahum fima razaqtahum, waghfir lahum, warhamhum. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless them in what you have provided for them, and forgive them, and have mercy upon them. And this is from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Muslim, fi sahihi Muslim. Fi sahihi, naam, fi sahihi Muslim. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Muslim, of Allah ta'ala, anhuma. And it's a long story. Uh, the Messenger of Allah he came to the house of the uh, uh, of the father of Abdullah ibn Busr, and uh, what Busr did was he gave him the Messenger of Allah he gave him food and he gave him uh, uh, food that he ate from the Messenger of Allah uh, Then the Messenger of Allah was brought uh, dates and the Messenger of Allah used to eat it and he would, what he would do is. He would place the, uh, the the seed that comes out from the date that when you finish eating the date, he will put it on between his two uh, fingers. This is a sunnah which, is, has, which has been abandoned. You find that many people when they eat the date, they will either open the date up first and then take out the uh, the nawa or the, 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 the seed. Or you, you find them eating the date. And then when they'll get this and they'll get the uh, when they finish eating the date, they'll just chuck, they'll just spit out the the the, the um the the seed into their hands and then chuck it away. 
As the Sunnah of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم is that when he would eat a date, he would eat a date, and then the seed that comes out, he will place it on the back part of his two fingers. As-salabatayni, as-sababat al-wusta. Between the two uh, index finger and the middle finger, he will put it in between it. He will put it in between it. And then, uh, he will then throw it away. And the reason why is when you, if you, if you eat and date, you will know that the seed has sticky parts on it. So if you pick it up with your hand, the, the inside part of your hand, the inside part of the hand will become sticky. And then whatever you touch afterwards will also become sticky. And so the Messenger of Allah wanted to avoid that. And so what he would do is he would put it on the back of his two uh, hands or in between uh, the back of his, the back of the uh, index finger and the middle finger in between it. And then he would place it down so that it would nothing, nothing on his main part of his fingertips will get sticky. Then... Drink was brought to the Messenger of Allah Sallam and he drank it. Uh, and, and also the Messenger of Allah Sallam, he would eat from that which was on his right hand side. And then after that, uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallam made dua for Abdullah and Bush and his father and he said, Allahumma barik lahum, fi ma razaqtahum, waghfir lahum, warhamhum. So that's where the dua comes from. And so this dua is a combination of that which is good in this world and also the hereafter in terms of being forgiven and then entered into paradise through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Musannif rahimahu Allah ta'ala mentions another chapter, which is التعيض بالدعاء لطلب الطعام أو الشراب. What dua should you make for one who has offered you food, who offered you drink? Someone comes, offers you food, offers you drink. What, what dua should you make for them? The dua is, Allahum أطعم من أطعمني واسقي من سقاني Oh Allah, feed the one who has fed me and give drink to the one who has given me drink. And this is of course from the, this stems from the bay, from the Jawami al Karim, or the Hadith of Messenger of Allah, the comprehensive speech of the Messenger of Allah, Sallam, La yumin wa hadukum, hatta yuhibba li akhi, ma yuhibbu li nafsi. That none of you should believe, none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother or he loves for himself. And so Abdullah, the slave of Allah, realizes this Hadith and applies it in everything that he does. And so when a brother offers him drink, he makes dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him drink with that. He gave me uh, a drink. And this is from the dua uh, or the long hadith of Al Maghdad ibn al Aswad radiallahu anhu fi sahih. Ay fi sahih Muslim. Fi sahih Muslim. The Messenger of Allah sallam, he mentioned his dua. He said, Allahumma at'im man at'amani wa asqi man asqani. Naam. And this is from a long uh, uh, dua which will take bin al ta'ala uh, later on in, in another sit maybe. But the shahid from the, from the from this long dua, the main shahid here is Qawluhu uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma at'im man at'amani wasqi man wasqi man saqani wasqi man saqani And then the musannif rahimahu allahu ta'ala mentions the dua pertaining to the aftara inda ahli bayt or inda ahli baytin Now you've been invited by a family to break your fast You've been invited by a family to break your fast. What invocations should you make for that family who has who has taken out uh, from their time, from their efforts, in order to invite you to break their fast with them? So what you say, so what you should say is, "أفطر عندكم الصائمون وأكل طعامكم الأبرار وصلت عليكم الملائكة." The messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, used to say to those who he would. Uh, break his fast with who had invited him to go to their house or to go to their place and to break the fast with them he would mention this dua as mentioned by Abu Dawood rahimahullah ta'ala fi sunanih that aftar uh, indakum as-sa'imun with you i.e. this family those who have been fasting have broken their fast and with you those who are fasting have fed have been fed by those who are right uh, uh, your food has been eaten by those who are Righteous. That your food, the food that you have prepared, has been eaten by the righteous, i.e., the Musta'imun, or the righteous ones. Naam. Wasallat alaykum malaika, and the angels recite their prayers upon you, i.e., they're asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to forgive you, asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to forgive you and have mercy upon you. So this dua is 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 beautiful in that it first comprises a reminder that you, O family, don't look at, يعني, the money you've spent. Or the the, 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 the the effort that you've gone through, don't look at that. Rather, look at what have you done. And that is, you've fed the Saimun. You've fed those who are fasting. You've fed those who are the righteous. 
You have given food to those who are righteous. And the angels, the angels have compensated your efforts with them seeking forgiveness for you. With them seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you have done, Ya Abdullah. Fala, يعني, don't, don't become someone who is, يعني, hey, um, you find people, they, 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 they uh, stay away from inviting their families over for iftar, or inviting their friends for iftar because of the cost. Oh, it's too expensive. Ah, yeah, I don't want to spend 200 pounds. I don't want to spend 300 pounds. I don't want to spend 300 dollars. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that. Oh, it's going to be too long. They're going to stay too late. They're going to stay too late. Oh, don't look at it from that angle. Don't look at it from what's coming out from you. Rather, look at it from what you're getting from it. What is the... the, the, the you invested 300 pounds. What is what you're getting? What is the reward that you're getting from that? What is the return on that investment? The return on that investment is what? Three things. Number one, that you have fed the fast. That the fast... The fasting individual has broken his fast with you. It is with your food he has broken his fast. It is with the dates that you spent money on that you brought that he's breaking his fast. You are re you are feeding the righteous. You are feeding the righteous, and then because of that, the angels are seeking forgiveness for you. The angels are asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to forgive you and to have mercy upon you. So that is a beautiful return on a worldly, yeah, on a investment that is only monetary. You have invested some wealth, you've lost 300 pounds that you've spent, but what you've gained from it is what? Forgiveness, the ability to say that you've fasted, you, you've broken the fast of those who are fasting, and likewise, the uh, you've fed and you've, and you've given drink and food to the righteous people. And of course, uh, the one who helps a person in good, then it's as if he has done it. And there are many ahadith pertaining to the ta'am al-ta'am, giving out, food and, 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 and giving out food especially those who are fasting and there are many rewards attached to it many rewards attached to it for, for Abdul Fa'ala Abdullah upon the slave of Allah he, he doesn't get angry when especially especially men and this is some, something that you see that men get angry with their wives because their wives the wives generally want to يعني, spread their food that they have made that they have spent effort in during the whole day making they want to spread it with others but you find the husband he comes home and he's angry with his wife for inviting her, her friend, her friend here, this friend, that there. Why? Uh, because he doesn't want to spend the money. He's stingy. Right? She's looking for the reward. He's looking for the. He's looking at the the pockets. Right? She's looking for the reward. So upon the husband is an Allah. Fear Allah Azza wa Jal and know that your wife is guiding you to that which is khayrun lak, that which is good for you. You might think in about three hundred pounds, you're gonna spend it on what on a game or on some books or some whatever it may be, or some yani, uh, shoes or whatever it may be. Instead of spending it on gaining the forgiveness of the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the angels asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to forgive you, you and me, lowly slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being asked by Al Abrar, the Malaika, uh, salam, they are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us due to what we have done. So the slave of Allah is it's upon him to realize this. It's upon him to realize this then the musannif rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions another chapter and this will probably be the second to last chapter i think Naam, probably yeah the second to last chapter which uh, of this lesson which is dua al saimi idha hadara al ta'am wa lam yuftir the dua of the one who's fasting for the one who offers you food and you decline so for example you're fasting a a qada fast مثلا مثلا Generally, this won't happen during Ramadan because everyone's fasting. But let's say that um, uh, uh, you're fasting a, a, a siyam qadha outside of Ramadan. And someone comes to you with food. Of course, this fasting is fasting that is obligatory. You can't break that fast. But maybe you don't want to mention to him that you are fasting. You don't want to mention to him that you are fasting. And so you decline the food. And so you decline the food. What should you say? What dua should you make for this individual? To hawin alayhi. To يعني, uh, make it easy upon him, to make him feel at ease after you had denied him taking his food. It is from the good character of the Muslim to do this. In that you're not breaking the heart of your brother. You're not breaking the heart of your brother. You don't want to say that you're fasting, because maybe he, then there might be other questions that come from it. And likewise, you don't want to break his heart by saying, No, I don't want your food. Because someone might have put a lot of effort into the food that he made. He might have spent a lot of money to give you that food. To, he may have ordered you and you give this brother that food there. He spent twenty pounds out of his pocket, pocket. So you want to be good. You want to be kind. You want to be. You want to make him feel at ease 
and you don't want to expose that you are fasting. It's siyam qada. You don't want to tell people that you are you are fasting your siyam qada. And so, the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, he's mentioned to have said, إذا دعي أحدكم فليجب فإن كان صائما فليصلي وإن كان مفطرا فليطعم. That ومعنى فليصلي أي فليدعو. So if one of you, if one, someone invites you to food or gives you or offers you food, if you are fasting, then make dua for him. Make dua for him. And if you are muftir, if you are a person who is not fasting, then eat the food that you've been sent. So if a brother sends you food and you are fasting, and it's siyam qadha, mathalan, as we said, or it's a siyam sunnah mu'akkad, you don't want to break. Generally speaking, if it's siyam sunnah, then you should break it. If it's siyam that is a sunnah, it's a nafila, if it's not a fard, then you should break it and it's better for you to break it and eat the food. And that was the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as for uh, uh, if this uh, and, and, and some of the ilm there is a more, more detail than what I mentioned in that they'll say if the siyam is sunnah if the siyam is a sunnah sunnah siyam for example you're fasting a Monday or a Thursday which is sunnah the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast Mondays and Thursday, so you're fasting on Monday, Sunnah Siyam, and a person offers you food, and a person offers you food, and this person is known to be, as I mentioned, an emotional individual, a guy who can get angry easily if you don't give if you don't give him what he wants. Hayal Tabu, this is what he has been. This is his nature. He's known to be get, to get angry, to get disappointed quickly. What's upon you? What's better for you is to break your fast and eat the food. To break your fast and to eat the food. But if he's a person who you know is upon khay, he, he he doesn't have that trait. He's a person who's uh, halim, he's a person who's forbearing, wise. Then you can continue fasting and then just apply this dua, make dua, apply, apply this, uh, this invocation and make dua for him. If it's as I mentioned, siyam qada and you can't break it because it's siyam which is fault, then make the dua. And if it's a person who we know is someone who gets his point quickly, then make sure the dua is yani, uh, a nice dua that is yani, explaining to him. Uh, in, 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 a, in a nice way Why I'm declining your food So again this stems from the khuluq, The good character of the person That he understands who it is that he's dealing with Who he is that he's tackling with What type of fasting that he's doing And then weighing up the different options And, and applying the right one uh, that, that is needed That is needed Naam. For the specific uh, situation Then the Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala He says مَا يَقُولُ الصَّائِمُ إِذَا سَابَّهُ أَحَدٍ if now someone curses you and you're fasting, and we can follow this on from the example that I mentioned, you're fasting siyam qadha. You're fasting siyam qadha. And this person, you know, he's a person who gets disappointed quickly, gets angry quickly if you, if you reject something from him. And you've rejected his food. And you've done it in a soft way. And you've made dua for him, etc. But he's not accepting it. And he starts cursing you. And he starts attacking you. And he starts hitting you. starts doing things to you. What do you do? Rather, you say, inni sa'im, inni sa'im. Allahumma inni sa'im, Allahumma inni Sa'im. As the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said As-Siyam Junnah As-Siyam is a protection فلا يرفض ولا يجهل وإن مرء قاتله أو شاتله فليقل إني صائم مرتين نعم That if a person fights you In this case we mentioned This person You've rejected his food Because you're fasting Siyam Qadha Or Siyam Ramadan And uh, you have to continue the fast And then you try to explain to him You made dua for him But he's not accepting it And he's a person who is يعني, غضب, Quick to get angry He gets angry He gets like hitting you starts cursing you starts attacking you What do you, What should you do? You stop You say Allahumma inni sa'im Allahumma inni sa'im Oh Allah I am fasting Oh Allah I am fasting طيب. And then the final chapter Which is in uh, The final chapter in this lesson Which is When you see the uh, The new dates Bakurat al-thamr Bakurat Al-thamr, the first days of the new season. Well, the dua, generally, it's if you're in Medina, in Medina or in the lands of where يعني, palm trees are present and you see these dates growing, and people who are invested in this or are involved in this, this is a dua specific to them. As for us here, we don't, we don't ever see dates. Rarely see dates growing here in this country or in the countries of the West. Uh, many, many, many times we, we won't see it, it, so it won't really apply to us here, but it's still a good dua to know. If you go to Medina and you find the dates of the new season, you make this uh, dhikr, which is اللهم بارك لنا في ثمرنا وبارك لنا في مدينتنا وبارك لنا في صاعنا وبارك لنا في مدنا Oh Allah, bless us in our dates and bless us i.e. in our Medina the city of the Messenger of Allah and bless us in our Sa'a Sa'a 
it is a, 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 a measurement. It is a specific measurement, a, uh, a, a, a unit of measurement that the Messenger of Allah Sallam used to uh, uh, have during his period, the equivalent of us in our days, kilos and, and liters, etc. Likewise, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's another form of unit of measurement. And a uh, sa' is equivalent to four. Mut, a sa' is equal to a four. To four mut, and a mut is that which a normal man's hand can carry. So, what can fill two palms of a normal human's hand, uh, a male's normal human male hand? What what can be, what can be uh, covered by the what can be carried by those two palms clenched together or put together like that? That is what's known as the mud, and the sa' is four times. That and we'll take it in fiqh classes in more detail. But in the Taala, here the the shahid here is that when you see new dates for the new season, when you see new gro crops growing for the new season, then you should make this uh, dua. Allahumma barik lana fi thamarina, wa barik lana fi madinatina, wa barik lana fi sa'ina, wa barik lana fi mudina. This is the end of the chapter pertaining to what we mentioned. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته